continue uh, <clears throat> crypto conversation. Price of Bitcoin this morning got very close to 100,000. Join us now, Andrew Hones, New Market Capital founder and CEO. And today, New Market is announcing Battery Finance. It's a Bitcoin focused asset management platform that combines uh, cryptocurrency uh, and other assets. I won't say real assets, because that sounds funny, doesn't it? It's like, uh, you know, something other than Bitcoin, like a real uh, asset. I'm not, tangible. Have a, yeah, a tangible. tangible. Let's, call it, let's call it uh, tangible. And the first, uh, you get, you've got to explain this to us, uh, the first time you're combining Bitcoin to actually make maybe loans, which, why don't you explain it? Because it, it, it takes some of the the, the problem that you normally have with lending, which is inflation, I guess, and it could actually lessen the risk and volatility for fiduciaries running pension plans. Yeah. Hard to believe Bitcoin could be a solution to pension uh, fund management. That's what we're thinking. Well, good morning, Joe, good morning. Becky, Andrew. I'm so pleased to be here. And I'm really excited to announce today on Squawk Box this loan that we've just completed. Uh, we combined uh, a seasoned multifamily asset in Philadelphia, about 50 meters away from the first bank of the United States, the one that Alexander Hamilton started. We combined that asset with around 20 Bitcoin, and we provided a loan to refinance the existing mortgage on the property to provide the asset sponsor uh, some funding for capital improvements and with the remainder to buy the 20 Bitcoin. Okay, we got to go backwards. Go ahead. <laughs> you got to go backwards. We're just going to slow the whole thing down nice. so everybody understands what happened. Okay. So there's a property. Yep. Physical property. Multifamily. Right. Multifamily. Right. It's a multifamily. 63 units. It's a multifamily property. The sponsor, the effectively the owner of that property. Yep. Needs a loan. That's right. Okay. They come to you. That's right. Okay. You say we'll provide you the loan in the form of a loan. A, a classic loan. That's right. Okay. So you're going to give them cash. That's right. Term okay. financing. Term financing. For, and how long is the loan? Just 10 years. 10, ten year loan. Okay. That's right. At trying, above market rate or below? or what's No the, market rate interest market rate. rate. I'm just trying to slow the whole thing. Okay. Now let's introduce the Bitcoin piece into it. That's right. So, no, no. Explain how the Bitcoin piece and then why? relates. So the loan has been provided. The use of proceeds is to pay off the existing financing. So the use of the proceeds of the loan of the loan is to retire the existing mortgage. Right. So there's an old, old mortgage. Gone. They're going to pay the old mortgage That's off. It's been paid off. OK. Now they have a little bit extra money to make some improvements in the property. Right. So and a little bit extra cash. So the, your, the, the amount of money you've lent pays off the old loan. That's right. It's also has you have a little bit of extra to, to fix Improve stuff the up. the property, fix okay. stuff up. Yep. And then with the remainder, which is a little bit so more. So you have even a little extra, an extra right. turn. And that, instead of cash out, it's uh -huh. Bitcoin in. And we use it to purchase some Bitcoin and add it to the collateral package of the loan. So now our loan is supported by both the traditional asset, the 63-unit apartment building, right. and the Bitcoin. Okay. So you, you're, the loan, it was maybe $2 million more, so that's how you get the exactly. Bitcoin out? Exactly yeah. right. So it's On a, the assumption that the Bitcoin's going to rise faster, and that will become an asset. That's, over the life of the loan, for yeah. sure. So we think on the downside, this provides us with much better protection compared to a traditional lender, because a traditional lender, if something goes wrong, they have to recover against that particular building, which is idiosyncratic risk. Something might happen with the maintenance or but what have you. that also requires conviction on your end, that Bitcoin is not a volatile asset, asset over, and time. over time. Over time. And that is either going to go up or at least stay where it is. Well, that's by, by fusing the Bitcoin with credit and by fusing it with traditionally financeable assets, it gives us the luxury of expressing that medium term view on Bitcoin. And that's what's key. It's volatile in the short run. You know, I mean, minute by minute today, who knows? It could cross 100,000. Right. That would be exciting. How, how long's the loan? 10 years. Ten years. Ten years. And the minimum hold period for the Bitcoin is four years. So what we say to the borrower is we say, look, you can repay the loan at any time for any reason with no penalty, mm -hmm. which is a really valuable feature compared mm -hmm. to a traditional loan. Yeah, that's like a but, home mortgage. Then. Right. Like a home mortgage yeah. almost. That's very unusual for commercial financing. But what we do say is that to the extent that the loan is repaid at year four or earlier, the minimum will release the property. But the minimum length of time that the Bitcoin has to stay in escrow is four years. Andrew, get, get, go, go on to because I don't know how it's time. But I'm, I'm fascinated about there is a problem for state and municipal and municipalities in terms of uh, the, the asset liability mix. Somehow you think 
that using Bitcoin, that you can lower that risk and, and increase returns and narrow the gap. How, how does that work for pensions? Well, if you think about it, Joe, uh, the average exposure to fixed income at U.S. pensions is around 25 to 30 percent. Okay. And many of them have an asset liability funding mismatch of around 25 percent as well. They're a big shortfall. That's going to be a big burden on taxpayers and a real problem. We've talked about this so much and how to, how to solve it. Now, what they've been doing in credit is reaching for risk, going for super high yields, leverage, niche strategies. And I think that it's time to pivot away from those toward high quality credit, where the return per unit of risk is extremely attractive, but the returns are not as high. Mm -hmm. How do you compensate for that? You fuse the credit with Bitcoin and you utilize the credit to express a medium to long term duration. Because, yes, if you have the Bitcoin for one day, one week, it's extremely volatile. But for four years, four year hold period, the worst ever return has been just over 23%. The fifth percentile, 30 percent. The 50th percentile, 91 percent. So if you take a small amount of Bitcoin and you add it to a large amount of high quality credit in novel lending solutions, novel structure credit pairings, what you can accomplish from an asset allocation and an overall portfolio strategy perspective is incredible. It can actually be a cornerstone to close the asset liability gap at pensions.